users like to start with something they don't want to start with a blank document so that's why the whole idea of the template gallery is if we show them the template gallery this choice of different templates they are more likely to interact with the application more welcome to behind the experience where we give you an inside look behind the people who create the product led experiences that we all love each week You'll hear inspiring UX examples, proven strategies, and hard-earned lessons from experts all around the world. This is one of the co-hosts, Ramli John, and Lila, my other co-host, and I will be chatting today with Eugenia. She is a product manager at PandaDoc. Now, PandaDoc is a SaaS platform that enables uh, companies and teams to easily create documents, automate workflows, and more. And today we're going to be talking about templates. Now, we all love templates because you don't have to start from scratch. But PandaDoc really takes a different approach to this and shows different categories for different use cases of different templates, which just really improve their activation rate. And we'll be digging into that in this episode. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump in, in our chat with Eugenia. Welcome to the Really Good UX Show powered by IPs, where we geek out on frameworks, tools, and inspiring examples that drive product adoption. This is Ramley John. Uh, and I have here my co-host, Alila. Hello, everybody. Dancing throughout Ramley's intro, distracting him thoroughly. That's my job. And today we are joined by my pal, Eugenia Brown. She's a product manager at PandaDoc. Two things that I just have a crush on in general. Um, a SaaS platform, if you don't know what PandaDoc is, which you should, uh, a SaaS, PandaDoc is a SaaS platform that enables teams to easily create documents, automate workflows, and more. We're a happy PandaDoc customer, and we're so happy to be joined by Eugenia. How's it going? Hi, everyone. Um, going well. It's finally, finally warm. We're ready to hike in Colorado Ooh. Springs mountains. I'm really excited about that. Really excited to get outside. I'm in the same boat. I'm uh, in New England, up in the hills. Same Seen here. a lot awesome. of snow for the past few months, and today it's sunny. So I finally feel like a human being. So feels pretty good. And not just an abominable snow individual. <laughs> so it's fantastic. So you, we're going to get right into it and just talk you know, all things onboarding in general and all things PandaDoc. And I'm really excited because we're going to do some things that we haven't seen, at least I haven't seen from you before, because I am a big PandaDoc creep. I'm always looking at your flows. In case you didn't know, they won uh, most beautiful flows out of all of these customers. So <laughs> another round of applause for PandaDoc. Um, so I'm actually really excited today because we're going to look at some other things uh, that they're working on that isn't just flows, which is really cool. So, um, you know, I would love to learn just a little bit more about how you define onboarding at PandaDoc, Eugenia. Like, is there different segments? You know, how, how does it all come together? Um, well, first of all, I wanted to say that everybody was so excited to learn that we won the, the, like, the most beautiful flows. I posted it everywhere in Slack and I was like, oh, yay, yay. <laughs> It's very Divine well deserved. Team, game. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it, it, I know you put a lot of process behind that. So it's just really awesome to see that like that process and those extra steps and those requests that you have to put in ahead of time to design team, it's paying off because they look fantastic. Yes. We, um, and our design team is amazing when it comes to creating um, smooth design that also kind of looks like Oh, it's part of the Pandoc app, and I really appreciate them. I wouldn't be able to do it without it. So, another shout out to my design team. But yeah, um, speaking of user onboarding, so for us, it's um, well, first of all, for us, it's the experience that helps new users discover Pandoc's value. We want to set them up for success and want them to see how Pandoc can help them achieve their goals how it can help them grow their business and save time. And I think there are like a few components to user onboarding. So that like that we um, rely on is first is the guided experience. 
Like you cannot just land the user in the app and let them figure it out. Like very few apps can afford that. So we want the onboarding to be this bridge between the user and uh, like the final goal. And the next part is kind of logically comes out of the first one of guided experience is the personalized experience. Different people use Pandoc, different teams use Pandoc. Everybody has their unique set of goals and success metrics that they will use to judge if Pandoc is the tool that will help them achieve these unique goals. So sales teams send proposals, HR teams send contracts. And believe me, these are different documents and they have different sets of features and needs. For example, sales proposals need a pricing table. Um, they need automation. They, we always like salespeople try to automate as much as they can so that sales reps just don't spend time on things like filling out a proposal with customer's data. And that's why we have CRM integrations. That's why we promote CRM, CRM integrations during onboarding for salespeople. HR is different. It's contracts. It's more variables. It's less design though. And coming back to proposals, more design, it has to look appealing. So again, uh, we want to show them how awesome design capabilities are in Panadoc. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that makes total sense. Like, is there, that sounds like a similar challenge I've had in the past where like everyone who's coming to your product kind of has not everyone, but most people have different goals and there's not really a set tunnel that we can take people down in a way. So how in that case, do you determine like, um, or do you have a single metric that you look at? Like, is it like if somebody created a document or is it like if they get assigned one back, is there something like that, that you consider a number one North star or like guiding metric? It's okay if not, but I was just curious. Well, when it comes to the metrics and measuring success, like we definitely measure success, like conversion from trial to pay. That's the overarching goal for, I think for any SaaS tool. So like conversion to pay, people buying Pandoc, for them to buy Pandoc, they need to see the value. So what is the value? Like we need to shorten this time to value. That's the goal of our, uh, of our user onboarding to drive user to these little value points that, and they will see like, oh, wow, Pandoc is awesome. We will buy them um, or buy Pandoc. So yes, our onboarding, specifically onboarding checklist is built around that. It's about, it's around nudging gently people to create uh, to create documents to send them sign them uh, to create templates so these are a few things that we drive people to and then we'll look at the onboarding checklist um, analytics and see if they well if they completed that step for example creating a document if they completed that step in checklist that means that they've interacted with the product makes a ton of sense. I think your your goals are tied to you know what people are trying to to do in, in the app. One of the things you said earlier that resonated with me is uh, is a bridge. It's a bridge to their goal. Um, and so like what I'm hearing is like creating that document is is it would you say that's like the uh, the first win that for for new users at, at Pandadoc and then probably later down is getting it signed and sending it to other people before they become even become a paying customer is what you would call for success? I would call a few things. So like it would be creating a document, sending it and creating a template. And then we have a couple of other things in the checklist. Yeah, in terms of, um, you know, obviously like you, it, it's not just the product team that works on this. Um, there's also, I'm guessing you're working with other teams uh, around collab, like that's one of the things that I keep saying this, but Lila is doing such a good. When I was working on onboarding before, like I did my own thing, but I see, I'm seeing Lila like work with the sales team, work with the customer success team. Yeah, I mean, Lila, you probably can speak to that right now. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Eugenia do a lot of this, just talking to her and, and learning a little bit about what she's working on, and it's just like, how do you unite? teams that you're working with across the company around onboarding. So like getting that feedback from sales that, you know, um, they need a different like set of features or they care about a different set of features than like, um, you know, someone who's coming in with trying to 
design a proposal? Like, how do you get that information? Is it like connecting with sales and support teams? Is it just through product analytics? Like, how do you work together as a team to like gather all that info and then make those kind of decisions? Mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, I want to say that I'm not the mastermind behind the onboarding. I work on everything that comes that we like what Panwork employees want to launch through AppQs. And I oversee that we have a team dedicated, like the part of their work is dedicated to onboarding uh, in app. But yes, you're right. Onboarding in app is a joint effort. We, when it comes to getting feedback from sales um, or giving them feedback, we work with the user research team. So that's the first thing that comes in play. We work with the user, uh, with our UX research. We talk to our customers and observe how they interact with the trial account on Pandoc. Like we ask them what's confusing, what's not confusing, what they would do first inside the app. Then we work with design to help us. And it's a, it's a partnership for sure. Uh, we like a product manager would par partner with designer to create the best, like the, the best onboarding flow for the customers, potential customers based on the research findings. And I do want to say that the UX research is not just about talking to uh, potential clients or just clients. It's also talking to the sales team and uh, onboarding teams and uh, customer support that like we look at the most asked like most common questions asked during the trial we get that from our revenue teams then we recently implemented the kind of like a this initiative where we would provide our sales team with product signals uh, like what the user has done in the app so that when the sales rep is doing research on their upcoming demo they can see oh this um this person has created a couple of documents or, or they created 10 documents. So that means, wow, they are really digging Panda Docs. So. That's awesome. So how do you have that set up? Yeah, um, is that ask. something you're like doing with like product data through a product analytics tool or yeah, your app yeah. Views? Um, yeah uh, and you're sending it to the CRM? We do not. We send it to the CRM this from the product database. Mm, awesome. Yeah, that's really great to do, setting up those like uh, product insights for people. Now, this is like kind of an off topic question, but do you have uh, PQLs of any kind that happen yeah. like after um, the purchase, like a product qualified lead of some kind? Not that I know of. We are working on actually feeding AppQ's data into the CRM for cust for current customers so that it can yep. see, oh, what content they have interacted with. Have they interact like have they completed the flows? Um, yep. really fascinating. Yeah. That, that information is super helpful to have. Um, just depending too on like how the information is presented. I feel like I've integrated things before and had you know all of their flow messages or everything they've done and it can kind of get overwhelming depending on how many flows um and what flows you're using so i've kind of taken the approach now where i'm like i only want to put the critical flows that they've seen um you know, in that area, because especially if you're tracking like the fact that they've skipped the flow, interacted with it and everything, you could get like three interactions at once in a, this is very nitty gritty. Yeah. But, um, but I do oh, find sure. that that is a really helpful thing to have in general, just like so people can see what flows people are seeing. It's one of the toughest things to disseminate that information, um, like what flows people are seeing at what time. I'm sure you can understand uh, that, Eugenia. It's like um, trying to level up that information is really difficult because it's not like an email where you just right. get it in your inbox. Right, right. And it's a, like, it's a really good point that you brought up here that there's, there can be a lot of information about flow interaction because we have a lot of them in general. Uh, going on in production and we need to feed only the relevant data so that our like 
customer success teams can uh, leverage that and it's not it's not just noise so. i want to i know you we get this asked this a lot but can can you walk us through your tech stack a little bit what is what is the crm you use um and you know like was that custom coded that that product sending the product data to the crm or like do you use like a i don't know segment or amplitude or something uh we use salesforce as i crm and we're gonna have to dig into that i will i can dig, oh, it, all... dig into that after the show but we do have like the teams that can just mm. uh, create integration like the, the dedicated team for salesforce and they can oh, um, oh so awesome. it's custom coded interesting yeah yeah that's fun that is fun that gives you a lot more flexibility yeah <laughs> with totally stuff, i think in general so that's great yeah i want to jump into the some of the things that cool things you're working on uh with, with templates i think that's i was happily surprised when i jumped into panadoc sign up yesterday i was like oh there's so many templates and it was like so useful I'm going to share a screen here. And for people who are tuning in uh, via podcast audio, there's a modal that says, how would you like to start? And then there's two options, upload or send for signature. And then the second one to the right is create document using templates. Uh, and when you know, when somebody's already selects create document with templates, you're presented with a few templates here, like NDA templates and invoice and proposal templates. Can you talk a little bit about like the journey um, with with templates? Because like it's something that I know Lala and I, the AppQs team, like the whole AppQs team is working on to create templates. But you said this was new, like is it newish? Um, how did this come? Uh, the the first part is kind of newish. It's definitely newer than the than the than the gallery that you um, mm. show the next one. So the first part, yeah, like during the research, we found out that. Uh, the first few few things that people want to jump into is either just upload their own document, and that's the first uh, option. The second one is uh, create document using a template, and we just offer them, hey, we have a template gallery for you to just jumpstart your journey with Panadoc, and we have those these templates set up with all the thing all of the things that you need, and all of the design that you might like. Um, and we have a lot of them for you to pick from. So the next screen where you see where you see different templates, we just try to cater to different teams. Is it a sales team or like maybe it's a sales manager that's evaluating Panadoc so they can check out the proposal uh, or a quote. And surely the proposals are the most, like the most beautiful because they have on the cover page with a nice design and uh, there's a little other thing design wise like, like and they have a pricing table and they have some sample products so you can just uh quickly just plug and play with that template but we also have agreements if it's a more like i don't know hr or legal team it's interesting to me that like the fanciest design one is the most like one of the most popular i don't know why that surprises me but sometimes it does i feel like sometimes people are um like intimidated by fancier stuff and they just kind of click the most basic thing but i love that like your audience i think is like no we like this pretty thing because your things are so pretty um so it just makes sense to me but like i feel like a lot of the times um at least myself, when I start off with a template, I'm like looking for like them, unless it's like a website or something, but I'm looking for the most like not basic one, but like the one that is most tailored to my needs or the one that like, I'm not really looking at design. So I love that this like catches the eye, um, especially when you're looking at it on the screen, it's like a, there's some really pretty gradients and shapes and blues that, that catch your eye. So that's really cool. I bet it yeah. makes it clear, even if you weren't sure if you were going to choose a template. And that's where we have different categories on the left side. So like if, if you want to, to find something specific to cater your needs, like you said, uh, yeah, you can choose from a specific industry that you work in or like specific type of document, like quote or um, proposal or agreement. agreement. And then you can see, decide if you want to go fancy with the design because not all companies have a dedicated design team to create their own like proposal design. And yeah, that's a good way for them to 
to start with some with something. And plus, we have that community gallery uh, that's right. under featured oh. there, um, and it's like actually the like companies that kind of do donated their templates and their design. Yeah, so kind of a real life exa example. Well, I, I was wondering, like throughout this and setting up, please, uh, and when you were setting this up. Uh, if there were any insights you saw, like, I guess the design thing sort of surprised me, but, um, you know, are there anything that surprised you in looking and setting up this, making some of these updates and the information that you got so far? Well, the biggest insight is that users like to start with something. They don't want to start with a blank document. So that's why the whole idea of the template gallery is. So if, if we show them the template gallery, this choice of different templates, they are more likely to interact with the application more. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. I think that's the direction that, you know, the top PLG companies are going, mm -hmm. um, really trying to get things as easy as possible to start up. Um, so it makes a ton of right. sense well to me. I even like I, I noticed myself when I'm evaluating, I love evaluating different like task <laughs> management apps and uh, I don't know, you know, like efficiency apps. And when I'm evaluating them, I love like seeing sample content, mm. like sample, I don't know if it's um sample task and right. it's, if it's filled up with some features and like things that relevant to a task, I don't know, maybe a deadline, maybe some uh, like subtasks is just awesome because that's how you discover features. You don't have to like go look for them. Oh, do they have the deadline or do they have some kind of uh, subtask or uh, functionality? No, it's right there. So the same way uh, with our template gallery. Yeah. And just to build on that, I clicked out of that and there's a new screen behind mm -hmm. it. You're like in the templates, like you have sample invoices, sample mm -hmm. sales proposals. The cool thing with that is like it, it encourages people to play around. Like it's like this sandbox. You're like go, going back to grade school. There's a sandbox, there's a pail, there's a shovel. <laughs> and what do you do with a shovel and a pail and sand if you're there? I, I would start digging around and I, I found myself clicking around here when I saw that. So I'm totally uh, with you there, like seeing sample stuff it enables you to click on things without feeling like you're without too much commitment, like you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. And that's totally what you found as well. Uh, is, I'm guessing here with the sample invoices and sales proposals uh, with, with PandaDoc. Awesome, well, um, thank you for sharing all, all that insights here. Uh, one of the other things that we wanted to ask is around what you're excited to work on next. Like what are some really cool stuff that you can potentially share to our audience that you're, uh, that you're working on, whether that's on onboarding or like just on uh, related to driving users to, to engage with the product more? Mm, I personally love feature adoptions a lot and like all of the things that we do around feature adoption uh, campaigns through AppQs, that's my favorite because I, I, I love seeing how content that we launch, launched like feature onboarding that we launched through AppQs influences the actual feature adoption. I just love sometimes to like procrastinate and look and look at analytics and see, oh, so this many people have seen the flow and then this many people have enabled this thing or like clicked on this. I love that. I can like literally, yeah, spend a lot of time on that. So um, luckily we've had a lot of uh, different feature adoption requests. And the recent one is the, we've released reporting, the updated reporting inside Pandoc that gives you insights on how many, like how's your team performing, how many, um, how many docu documents they've sent, how many doc how many of these documents have been completed, uh, and you can like break it down into different teams or different workspaces or different like or just individuals, and you can create custom reporting. So we have um, a whole product tour dedicated to onboarding users to this new functionality, and. Um, we are working on how like how we can improve the onboarding, make it not too long, not too short. And the thing that I've discovered like a month ago is the remind me later button that we can set up with the app use flows. And I like I was looking for a chance to 
use it somewhere and finally i got it and we're using the remind so like we can instead like the users can click remind me later instead of just closing closing the model if it's if they just don't have the time for the tour now and we can target them again and yeah so i'm testing this out i'll let you know how it goes so cool. Yeah, that's know. super exciting. Yeah, no, that, that's really awesome. Actually, our your contact here at AppKey is Anna Heard. She was like all excited when she told you about the feature and was like, I made you Jenny uh, happy. I taught her something she didn't know about. And it was, we were all Yay. very excited. So we're glad that you're trying that out. Um, it actually made me try it out more as well. Uh, you and Anna talking about it. So I've added it to more of our buttons. So, um, you know, I gotta love the synergy. Yeah, I, I love it. And we've also, well, I haven't used it yet because I haven't gone on uh, like any vacations, but Anna taught me the um, the scheduling kind of like these, oh, the workaround yeah. for scheduling mm -hmm. flows. And, and I'm gonna enjoy that because I can just, I don't have to bother my designers and be like, hey, can you click publish? Yeah. on this day I can just get yes. yeah and also unpublishing because like i don't know about you but a lot of times if we mm -hmm. launch something like especially if it's a feature announcement i'll sometimes forget and be like oh gosh there's like a flow that i don't need up anymore um you know so i like the scheduling for also unpublishing um yeah eugenia where can people find more about you online linkedin pandadoc do you have a website? Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn. No, I don't have a website. Me? It's okay. You don't have to. That's <laughs> just wondering. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, um, I really appreciate you joining us. You know, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Until the next one. Bye, everyone.